Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the WD Black P50. This is another one of those external solid state drives. This one has a one terabyte NVMe inside, but it connects over USB type C. This is being marketed at gamers, but it will work with just about anything. So if you've got something that works with USB storage, it's going to work just fine with that. Although we will talk a little bit about using this with an Xbox console as we work our way through the review. And we're also going to take a look at another drive they make called the Extreme Pro from SanDisk. And we'll see if there's any differences between these two. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from WD. However, they are not paying for this review. No one is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this drive is all about. Now, the price point on this for the one terabyte version is $199. The two terabyte version is $349, and there's a four terabyte version on Amazon right now for $700. So the price escalates very quickly on these. You will certainly find more capacity in a spinning drive for much less but these do deliver better performance than a spinning drive would. Hardware-wise, it's pretty basic. There's a nice rugged metal shell here on the top. The bottom portion feels like plastic, but it's a very rugged plastic. They have some rubber feet here that keep it from sliding around when it's on the surface of a desk or a game console, and it looks like it has some ability to dissipate heat here through the bottom. It didn't get all that hot in my testing. I didn't see any thermal slowdowns with it. Uh, so generally, I think it will keep itself pretty cool. There is a single connector on it, of course, and that is right up top here. This is a USB Type-C connector. And of course, USB Type-C gets complicated. And with this drive, it's especially complicated to reach the speeds that they're advertising. Let me show you what I mean. Now, if we take a look at the packaging for the drive here, you can see that they're advertising 2,000 megabytes per second or 2 gigabytes per second. And they're also listing that USB port we were just looking at as being super speed USB 20 gigabits per second. Now what's important to note is that there is no computer that I'm aware of at the moment that actually ships with a port that supports this 20 gigabit USB speed. And you might be saying, well, Lon, what about all this new USB 4 stuff with Thunderbolt integration? Surely you can get 20 gigabits per second with this drive on that standard. And the answer is not really. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. Uh, so this chart from Wikipedia lists all of the current USB standards for data transfer. Now, the one that this drive supports is the super speed USB 20 gigabits per second standard designated with this logo, the SS with a little 20 there above the USB icon. And you can see that this is called the USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 standard. Now what most computers have is something that supports this speed here, uh, which is the 10 gigabit version, USB 3.2 Gen 2x1, also known as USB 3.1 Gen 2. So the reality, I think, for most people is you're going to get half the speed that's advertised here on the hardware that you're plugging it into, primarily because I don't see many computers supporting 2x2 two two at all. Many don't now, most don't actually. And unless you get a separate adapter card for your computer, you're never gonna get the speeds that are being advertised here, even with a Thunderbolt or USB 4 port. Now there's a separate 20 gigabit standard as part of USB 4 that is coming over from Thunderbolt. And although this drive will work just fine on one of those USB 4 connectors at 10 gigabits per second, it's not the same standard as the 20 gigabit standard that is going to be built into USB 4. So just be aware that you're going to get close to a gigabyte per second out of this under the best conditions in most cases, unless you specifically have a USB port that supports two by two. Now I apologize for taking two and a half minutes to explain all of this, but I think it's really important for everyone to understand what the reality is versus the marketing, uh, especially with the standard they chose for this drive. And the SanDisk drive here that we reviewed a couple of months ago has the same issue. It's a great performing drive, but the standard that it supports is not the one that I think most people are going to have. So again, both of these will perform very well as one gigabyte or they're about uh, per second drives, but not more than that. Now this is being marketed at gamers, but if you are planning to use this with a next generation game console, that means the Xbox Series S and X or the PS5, things get a little more complicated. 
in both cases, whether you're on the Xbox platform or the PS5 platform, the enhanced games for those new consoles will not run off of external storage, even storage as fast as this drive. I did try to install a game that was enhanced for the Series X on my Series X upstairs, and I got this message where I can store the game on external storage, but not actually play the game from external storage. In order to do that with expanded storage, you have to get a specific drive that's compatible with those next generation consoles for that purpose. This one won't do it. Now, one advantage this drive brings for console users is that it does a very nice job playing some of the legacy games. So if you're trying to use this with a PS4 or a prior generation Xbox console, you will see a speed improvement over the internal spinning drive that those consoles have. Uh, we found on my Xbox One X, we were booting some of these games up three or four seconds faster. And I think some of the gameplay was a little quicker on this drive as well because it is a solid state drive. Now, if you're on the PS5 or the Series S or X, you can move the legacy games, the PS4 and the old Xbox games to this drive and play those games off the drive on the new consoles. That will free up your internal drive for the new stuff and the old stuff will run really nicely off of this. And I think that's the use case for this particular drive now. But again, the new enhanced games won't run on this at all. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So let's begin with a sequential read and write test. And we've got it connected right now to my gaming laptop via its Thunderbolt 3 connector. And again, this does not support the 2x2 standard. And what you're going to see here is likely what you're going to get close to in your own testing. Uh, so let's go ahead and start that test and see what we're getting. And we're getting about what I expected, roughly about 900 megabytes per second or so on writes and roughly the same on reads. One thing I'm finding with a lot of these high performance USB drives is that because they can so heavily saturate the connection, uh, the quality of the USB controller on the device you're plugging it into makes a big impact in overall performance. So the speeds that I'm seeing on this laptop, again, running over USB, is a little different than what I got on my gaming desktop upstairs that has a slightly better USB controller inside. If this was a Thunderbolt drive, this would be a totally different story. Uh, so let's take a look at what I got on the Crystal Disk Mark test on that computer upstairs. And as you can see here, we were getting pretty close to the one gigabyte per second mark. And also we were getting very good performance on its random reads and writes uh, that that test also does when it's evaluating performance. So altogether, really nice performance here despite the complexity. Uh, there is also a little indicator light on here to let you know when the drive is in operation, but it really just pulses on and off when things are being read or written to. It's not giving you like a fast blinking for a more granular look at what's going on, but it's nice to know that you can at least differentiate when the drive is idle versus being uh, accessed in some way. Let's take a look now and see how it compares to some other drives we've looked at recently. Now the SanDisk Extreme Pro being marketed at Creative Professionals by WD performs almost identically to the P50 that's being marketed to the gaming community. And they also cost about the same too. So if you're in the market for one of these two drives, just get whatever's available. You're going to get the same performance. And like the P50, the Extreme Pro here also only supports two by two USB for its faster 20 gigabit per second mode. The only difference physically beyond the way they look is that uh, the Extreme Pro here from SanDisk does have some degree of weatherproofing to the packaging. So if it gets wet, uh, it will likely survive more than this one would survive. But in either case, I don't recommend getting these things anywhere near water with your important data on them. Uh, the Samsung T7 is another one you might be seeing out there, and it too holds its own against these WD manufactured drives across most of the aspects of that test. So no matter which one you pick, I think you'll end up with good gaming performance. But we certainly are starting to see the limits of USB storage for modern gaming. That is certainly true on the consoles and it will soon be true on the PCs. So I would expect to really get the best performance on legacy titles on this drive and newer technologies for what's coming next. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters.
including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.